Hi everyone. So um, this presentation is about the computer vision expression pattern at scale uh, with um, a rubber set pink as a um, um, computer vision ecosystem. So um, the main goal is um, the ability to detect inconsistency or consistency between two data sets. So in our case, we'll use uh, rubber set pink as uh, the framework to be able to uh, extract pattern and feature from imagery and then to compare if we have to another data set who could be either the original label or one another. And so to put in evidence change detection or um, data set quality analysis if there is uh, some uh, um, reliable uh, data to compare or not. Um, so how does it work? It's about the deep learning stuff, so it's supervised um, uh, learning. So we have um, a neural network model, we have uh, in input imagery and labels. And so as we train uh, the neural network with a um, dedicated loss function, we are able to get a trained model. And once we've trained a model to extract this kind of pattern, we can just with new imagery, put in input this new imagery to the trained model and get new prediction. That's the whole stuff. So the main important stuff is labels, they must be accurate enough, and loss function to be dedicated to what kind of pattern we want to extract for. And once we get the prediction, we can compare to something else. And that's the stuff. So um, in RoboSet Pink, what kind of input can we play with? We can play with um, any kind of raster uh, able to be read by GDAL. Um, it can be raster file or coverage raster, or it can came from um, web services. So it could be a WMS or on XYZ uh, web services. So any kind of um, input like that can be used. Um, and as vector, you can use either GeoCision, PostGIS, or PBF. It's a kind of um, format file well used with OSM um, output. So uh, since you use this kind of uh, input either for imagery or for vector, you are able to do what? To train and to predict um, new mask. And in or since you predict mask, you can uh, thereafter uh, compare them to um, another data set as mask, so as raster, or um, uh, extract your, your mask to vector, and either to Spotify where there is in, enough differences between the two to, uh, to make it easier for a human to directly go to the right point. So that's a theory call. Uh, we'll see um, uh, in a quick um, uh, we'll see demonstration. Uh, just before the demonstration, a thing to keep in mind that um, about the color, the pink was uh, uh, configured to be the predicted um, by the model. So each time you see pink, uh, it's um, produced by the model. Uh, each time it's green, so it came from the label. Uh, and each time it's gray, it means that both are agree because uh, pink and green, it may gray. So it's an easy way to be uh, able to um, uh, check the detection of um, check the, um, the differences um, in, a, in a single time. And the square pink here um, is the ability to focus on the area where there is enough differences. So it, uh, it's a time saver for human because it can zoom out, zoom in directly on the place where, where it need. Um, just um, a few information more. It's a command line interface uh, stuff with uh, so many tools who are dedicated to only few things. So um, it's really uh, like uh, a GDAL, uh, so it can be really used like a GDAL companion. So you have a little uh, command tool and you can add extra one dedicated to um, deep learning stuff. Okay? And so here we can see that in this uh, tutorial, RoboSet Pink 101. It was the one who was um, 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 uh, put uh, in, uh, was um, uh, done um, uh, with a workshop in the um, in Tuesday. And in this um, uh, tutorial, we uh, use um, Tanzania uh, Open Dataset, and we. So it's not my computer. 
and it's not my operating system. So the point here is to show you that you can retrieve all the, the TIFF related to the imagery and you can easily tile them and display them to see that everything is smooth. So each time you launch, each time you launch um, a command, it uh, creates a way to display it either with leaflets or with other JavaScript stuff. So uh, it's an easy way to, to check at each step that everything is smooth and you do it well. So once uh, you, you tile um, your imagery, you will do the same with the label. So you retrieve the label, it's a GeoJSON. You will import them in, uh, in PostGIS. You can launch some, um, um, some special query to retrieve them uh, as a label, and you can create so your label from the GeoJSON, and you display them. Uh, and you will continue there to create your data set only with command, um, command line, and launch the training, and create the prediction. And so at the end, you will be able to um, retrieve a new imagery, the one from a new area, tile them again, and retrieve OpenStreetMap data from this new area, because at this point you have no labels, and <coughs> predict from your mm, train uh, model. And so, uh, in pink here, it's all the places where there is um, um, building footprint detected by the model. So the point here is the ability in fact, to, uh, to put them uh, compare them, so if here I zoom out, there is all these places where there is enough differences between the two data sets, and here, if I'm able to zoom in, yeah. Okay, so all these places, they are um, spot as uh, there is something, um, there is significant differences between the two data sets, and you see that everything here is plain pink, so it means that these um, uh, buildings are not in OpenStreetMap, but was detected as buildings by the model. So it could be an easy way for uh, someone who has uh, to, um, uh, to complete a data set to easily check where there is something to, to look at and where there is places where it's already seemed to be either with no buildings or either complete. So it's um, um, a tool um, who can be helpful to save time. So uh, this Wolves um, uh, workshop uh, took something like one hour and a half. So if you have only one GPU uh, and not the big one, uh, all the stuff, the download, the tile, the prediction, and so on, it's one hour and a half. So it's really something you can use um, daily because it's already efficient enough to be used. Uh, it's easy to deploy. It's just a pip tree install, that's it. Uh, and if you have the G, um, NV, um, NVIDIA um, driver to install, there is two more lines to install the NVIDIA driver, that's it. Um, so all you need is imagery, one GPU at least, uh, and labels. So imagery, already said that anything uh, readable by GDAL, and uh, about the GPU, it's at least eight giga RAM, and about the label, that's the point. That's the point, but because there is um, so many, so few, peop so few places where you can find uh, um, uh, labels with um, enough um, accuracy uh, to train your, your model. So, uh, what are you? Um, what uh, what can we do? Uh, we can take plain open data and perform a two-step training. Uh, the first step. It's also online, so you can use it also. Um, and uh, the two-step um, training is uh, simple. Here in this example, we just create a cover about uh, um, the Lyon uh, city uh, area, and we retrieve uh, through WMS all the imagery from Lyon. It's a city in France. Once we've done that, uh, we then rasterize uh, their label. They came uh, also from Open Data, from a WFS, and then we launch the training. We launch a quick training, only 10 epoch. 
Once we've done that, we can then compare them and extract only the ones where there is significant differences. And once we've done that, we have a tool, a compare in mode side, and if we click on this one at the spot, we have directly as a result of the command this kind of interface in JavaScript, uh, and it is uh, um, something who can show us the imagery and the compare. It's only 10 epochs, so it's still something noisy, but it helps us to, to see if it's noisy because of the model or because of the labels. And we can easily pass from one to one, and on this case, because it's pink, it's because of the missing the labels. So we can select it to remove it from the turning data set. And easily, we can pass from one to another, keep, keep, remove, no, so uh, we keep because uh, uh, it's about the model. We remove, and so on, and so on. So it's an easy way to uh, keep or remove uh, your tiles from your, your data set to have something at the end um, with uh, um, accuracy levels inside at low cost, because there is, there is no one who has to draw something at pixel level. You just have to choose if it's a good one, yes or no. So it's really a quicker way uh, to be able to have something both uh, open data uh, and both uh, accurate. Um, it's um, something we use um, about RoboSet Pink, a cutting edge computer vision um, solution. Uh, and for instance, we use um, a low batch uh, loss. Um, we provide the um, ability to have something really um, clear, so uh, there is a, a lot of um, less of noise uh, between um, uh, other solutions. Uh, and it's dedicated to surfaces extraction. So anything with a surface will be um, extracted by the function, but not a linear stuff. Um, there is a data augmentation um, inside, and a good one. Um, and more than application, it's a framework. So if you want, for instance, a new loss or a new model, uh, it's easy. You just have to um, open the directory, uh, um, this kind of directory, put your file, and just call it from the configuration file. So it's already an easy way to add new feature uh, on uh, this, um, this framework. What about the stack? Um, RoboSat Pink uh, use a well-known stack related to uh, GIS stuff, uh, um, this kind of tool, uh, also to computer vision, and also to deep learning. So this is a mix between what we already do well in GIS, what is existing well in computer vision, and the latest um, advance in deep learning. The only point here to, to show is this one too are not open source. And a day it will cost. Um, but RoboSetting itself is, robo is open source. Uh, it's an M MIT license, so um, you can do whatever you, you want with, uh, almost. Um, and um, as it's open source as a software, uh, the model, the business model, is based on um, specific development. So uh, there is a request for funding. Um, there is three kind of uh, new, uh, new feature we can uh, add it. We can increase again prediction accuracy, uh, especially on low resolution imagery, or even if you have very few labels, um, or um, if uh, you want to extract feature, uh, even uh, if they are really close. Um, and uh, we can also uh, add uh, support to um, Pound Cloud um, in, um, in the model, or if imagery um, the time series. And we can also improve, again, performances, even if right now it's quite fast. So um, um, if we, get, uh, if we um, provide some, some metrics about the performances, uh, here it's uh, in megapixel per second. Uh, so um, the, from the slower to the quicker. So the slower, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a surprise, is a train, because it's per epoch. Uh, and uh, you, you will need at least few epochs 
um, before uh, to have a um, trained model efficient enough to do something. Even if, in the um, example I um, just provided before, even with really few epochs, we can already converge to something uh, interesting um, to, to show differences between two data sets. Um, the tiling can still be improved, and uh, the other one uh, are still, um, still, still okay. Um, what does it mean? That means that with only one GPU, uh, you can already play with this kind of solution and use it for real, even with uh, quite a large area. Um, but if you want to scale it again, what does it mean? Uh, if you want to um, in increase again the, the train um, um, speed, uh, it, 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 implied, it could imply only to add more GPU, and natively it, it handles multi-GPU uh, solution. Um, it could um, um, be related to reduce your data set by choosing only the significant a tile inside and not the whole one. Uh, so um, some kind of cherry picking uh, data set uh, approach. Uh, and obviously you can improve model loss or optimizer to converge quickly. Um, about the tiling, um, right now you can add more CPU because uh, it's, um, the scale um, uh, it's related to, to the number of core uh, you have or use um, some kind of, uh, to reduce the latency, for instance with the NVMe. Uh, and about the predict, Right now, uh, the prediction is done, uh, is performed by PyTorch, um, but uh, you can export it right now with, um, to Onenix or to GIT, uh, and so uh, have the ability to use something else to perform the inference. And so, uh, since you do that, um, you can choose your own solution and, for instance, uh, switch to C++ uh, to be able to have something uh, really able to, uh, to do it even quicker. Um, why performance matters? Be firstly, because it's more playful and more easy for humans um, to, to learn if they have quicker um, cycles. Uh, it's a time and money saver, it's obvious, um, but it's also that there is no planet B. Uh, so if you reduce um, drastically the time um, related to, um, to, to the server consumption, uh, it helps for um, the carbon neutral stuff. And also it's a phosphoric community issue. Because if we are not able to perform this kind of solution for at, uh, at scale for um, continent, for instance, or for the whole world, um, we are um, uh, dependent of big actors uh, who are um, in the um, who have big cloud uh, infrastructure, and we could do that. So we have a need uh, to have something workable even on a really large area uh, with low architecture to be still uh, in the race and to be still uh, able to, uh, to keep um, Phosphorgy community itself. Uh, right now, there is uh, several uh, solutions to, to perform this kind of stuff. There is Raster Vision, EOLearn, Solaris, RoboSat Pink, um, there is, and there is more. Uh, so the point is, do we all need to have this kind of diversity? Right now, it was a need because each of these team needed to uh, have his own competence um, and uh, to uh, his own skills, and to be sure that uh, uh, they understand very well what they are, um, what they are, do what they are doing. Uh, but the question now is, could we share com a common framework? Um, and also about the open data set, if we are looking about the other community, um, for instance in NLP or something like that, um, they are structured themselves because they have open data set with label good enough to be used as is, and uh, there, there is no needing to, um, uh, uh, to change or to, to rule about the data, and uh, with a common metric evaluation, um, and kept on place. So um, <laughs> even one year or two years after, you can relaunch a um, com kind of evaluation and say, okay, my new model improve what has been uh, designed before by two sigma, for instance. And you can have a very quick way to evaluate, it, uh, to evaluate uh, progress only by, by saying that two sigma on this metric and on this data set point. So it's, it's a really good way to, uh, to, um, to be able to, to choose between um, several approaches. And on this topic, there is a bird of feather today. That's it. Thanks.
Okay, thank you very much. Questions? Oh, many. Hey, um, is there a way in RoboSat Pink to quantitatively evaluate performance, like evaluation metrics, you know, building IOU or anything like that? Yeah, there is a indeed metrics. So here, there is a, um, a directory called metrics, and by um, right now, it's um, there is a IOU and uh, MCC uh, for like pixel-wise metrics or yep. the. Pixel wise matrix per, um, per, per tile, in fact, yes. Thanks. Yeah. Just a quick one. I'm not sure if you mentioned the programming languages you used to, to code uh, RoboSat Pink. Um, RoboSat Pink itself is mainly code in um, Python with a few JavaScript, uh, JavaScript um, code related to, to Leaflet and so on. Um, but uh, obviously, at a point um, when you need performances, uh, this kind of tool are C or C++. So it's really the, um, at, this, at this level, it became Python. But uh, each time there is a need of performance, uh, there is, um, yeah, obviously C and C++. Yeah. Thanks. Quick question, in terms of uh, network architecture that you are using and that are already available and integrated? Sorry. In terms of network architecture? Yeah, um, th this one is a unit kind with a ResNet 50 uh, as an encoder and with some uh, dedicated um, parameters to, uh, for the stride, and so on, something like that. And uh, the ability to, to deal with multi-channel inputs. And it is possible to extend also the network in terms yeah, of, by, of the model? By models? design, everything is, uh, you can replace everything. So Thank if, you. if you need another model, up to you, yeah. And it's documented. Um, just a comment, uh, sorry, um, regarding the um, yeah. EOLearn and connection with um, other tools. So EOLearn doesn't aim to do the same thing as RoboSat Pink is doing. So. Uh, we would like to see these two tools um, used together, and your learn is just there to kind of prepare the data set okay. um, in order then it's just plug and play also for Solaris or RoboSat okay. Pink and so on. So it's okay. just to build a stack. Um, a question about how to share best practices about deep learning between these frameworks. What's, what's the best way for different teams to develop, um, you know, a, Share documentation about uh, best practice around training models, so things like uh, mixed precision training, other things where each team maybe is, has these ideas to themselves, but um, there could be benefits from uh, sharing that knowledge. Um, at this time, um, yes, I understand your question. Um, I provide a um, kind of training solution. So um, there is a customer who came and we want to, to be. Um, are able to do that by themselves, and it's training. Yeah. Is it, is it your answer to your question, or? Mm, I guess, yeah, on this slide, right, there is uh, sharing a common framework oh, and open data sets. Yeah. But in terms of um, lists of techniques or choices between different and techniques that are best practices for deep learning in this space, how do you envision this knowledge can be documented other than you know, in-person meetings? Um, I'm not sure to, to really understand the question, um, but um, I'm, I will try an answer and you, you will say. Um, here the, the point is the ability uh, when there is a lot of papers uh, to, uh, to immediately know if there is an interest to read the rest of the paper because there is enough uh, improvement, uh, for instance on the model, for instance on the loss, and so on and so on. So the point here is to have a way to uh, easily um, can have a, um, an ID that if there is something improved, yes or no, uh, when everyone try to, to make it better than, than the other. That's the point. That, that makes sense. Yeah, maybe like a shared list of new papers, some kind of reading group between different teams so people can stay up to date. Yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, Thanks. We only had five minutes, you know. So thank you for your questions, and now we have five minutes for changing rooms. So it's your chance to escape.
Danke. <lacht>